Yes, now we're talking about space resource utilisation. So, so the extraction of minerals, um, and water, uh, helium, all sorts of things yes. in, in outer, outer space. So, so we're not really talking about where we're extracting it from, just extracting anything from anywhere, not Earth. Right. Okay. Right, right, exactly. So um, it immediately comes up against this non-appropriation principle that says that you can't claim sovereignty by means of use, occupation, or, or any other means okay. over, over a, a part of outer space. Now, the, the argument that's, that's made contrary to that, that, that it is okay, is that it, it, it's a bit like the fish in the high seas. Okay. By extracting the fish from the high seas, you are claiming ownership over the fish that you extract, yep. but you're not claiming ownership over any part of the high seas. Okay, all right. So that's, yeah, okay. that's the argument that's made. Okay, so and everyone's able to fish in the high seas. Right. But you're still able to take the fish. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Um, now, of course, the the analogy breaks down a little bit because fish are, in theory, a renewable resource. Yes. Whereas, if you extract minerals from an asteroid, mm. it's not necessarily renewable. That's right. Yeah. If you if you went to the high seas and then started to suck out the water. Yes. With that, you know, right? That's kind of the almost the same analogy that you're starting to get into, right? Or right. Yeah. Okay. So there are some difficulties with that analogy, but that's the analogy. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. That's given. Um, so uh, and and that is in fact the the U.S. position that 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 um, extraction is okay because extraction does not mean that you're claiming sovereignty over, say, the moon or an asteroid. You're it, just you're taking just stuff from e it. Extracting resources okay. from it. And I guess you can make the argument for asteroids, all right, the moon's hard, but the asteroids, I mean, there's thousands of them, right? So Plenty fact, of asteroids. Yeah, there's many asteroids. You can just take as many as you want yes. in theory and still have some left for other people. So there's, does there become differences there between certain bodies and the issues? No, the, the law doesn't make any distinction okay. between between different bodies, but um, and and you know, given your expertise, you may be able to tell me otherwise. But but I, I believe it's the fact that there's always going to be one asteroid that is closest or easiest. There there will always be the best one, right? You will always yes. find the best one. That's true. Yeah. Right. So there's there's not likely... all asteroids are equal. <laughs> no, exactly. So there's always going to be competition yeah. for the, that Fair that enough. easiest or closest one, if you like. Yep. Um, now uh, states would also say governments would also say yep. that there's freedom of use and exploration of outer space, and that should include space resource uh, uh, utilization as well. And, and look, multiple countries have extracted things from the moon. Fine, we've extracted things from asteroids, and no one really denies that argument, right? right. No one's ever thrown an issue that they've done that. Yes. So this is where it bec becomes quite interesting that the US, for example, doesn't support the moon agreement, yeah. because the moon agreement says a couple of things explicitly that the Outer Space Treaty doesn't say. Yep. One of the things that the Moon Agreement uh, m says more explicitly than the Outer Space Treaty is that you can extract resources for scientific purposes yep. and, 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 and hold on to them as though they were your own. Yeah, there are hundreds of kilograms of the moon rock vault from right. the 60s and 70s right in Houston. Right. And no one's complaining that they're there. Right. And so given that the Moon Agreement explicitly says this, you would think, well, why doesn't the US support the Moon Agreement? But then the Moon Agreement also says that, or one thing it says, uh, the outer space is the common heritage of mankind. Mm -hmm. And it introduces this idea that outer space is owned by everyone. Yes. So uh, I'll use two Latin terms again. There's there's two ways you could think about outer space. One is it's res communis, as in owned by everyone. Yeah, okay. In which case you would need to get permission from, from everyone. everyone. And what is everyone? And what yeah, is yeah. everyone? Okay. Or it's res nullius, in which case it's owned by no one, in which case you don't have to get permission from anyone. But you just can't claim ownership, right? That's right. But 
Yeah. So one's like asking permission and one's asking forgiveness almost, it feels like. <laughs> in, in a way. In a way. Okay. All right. So, so we don't have an, uh, an answer yeah. for that. Okay. Um, and the, the Moon Agreement says we need to develop an answer. Yeah. Okay. Essentially what it says. Um, Article 11.5 of the Outer Space, uh, of the, sorry, the Moon Agreement says that when we are on the cusp of being able to do space resource utilization, we need to, to develop an international regime. Interesting. Okay. I did not realize it said that in the in the Moon Treaty or the Moon yeah. Agreement. Yeah. So Australia is a party yes. to the Moon Agreement. That's right. So those states who are parties to the Moon Agreement are obliged to come together and to try to come up with a, uh, a regime um, at the point where space resource utilization becomes feasible. Okay. So the question is, is when is that? Yeah. And arguably it's right now. Yes. I would so, say a lot of people are pointing to you're on the cusp of it being feasible, or at least in the planning of missions that are reliant on it being feasible. Yes. Right. And as, as you would know, the, the, uh, the NASA's Artemis program yeah. aims to send uh, the first woman and, and, and person of color to the moon. Um, and part of it includes the extraction of resources yes. on the moon. Um, and there is a section of the Artemis Accords, which is something that any state that wants to be involved in the Artemis program needs to sign up to. So this is so the U.S. then created their own moon law for the moon program. Yeah, okay. es essentially, um, although it's it's um, it's a bilateral, non-legally binding instrument. Okay. It's not a treaty. Yep. It's it's a, it, it's politically binding. Okay. All but, right. But yeah, not yeah. legally binding. The the Artemis Accords is. And so I guess so I guess the the point here is you're, if you're joining the U.S. and working to it, you agree to politically agree to our views and policies and procedures. Right. And so I guess then the enforcement is you could be kicked out of the program, right? Yes. And that is the kind of implementation or enforcement of that law. Right. Yeah. And, and Section 10 of the Artemis Accords says that extraction of resources in outer space is not inconsistent with the non-appropriation principle in Article 2 of the Outer Space Treaty. Okay. Um, so, you know, a little bit controversial. And Australia finds itself in both camps, right? Because right. Moon Agreement signed and signed the Artemis Accords, right? Yes. But the U.S. has not signed the Moon Agreement, but obviously has signed the Artemis right. Accords. Right. And Australia might say, well, look, we're, we're obliged to work to develop an international regime that could actually come from the Artemis Accords. Yep. yep. So, That's you know, being a party to both is not necessarily inconsistent yep. with our obligations. OK. Um, th th that has yet to play out. We've yet <laughs> to see how it will all play out. But it's something that we'll start to see more of in the coming years. Yes. Dramatically. Now, if, if a, a number of countries got together and agreed on an international regime, they would probably point to the principle that says that outer space should be used for the benefit of all countries yeah. and is the province of humanity. In which case, if you're going to extract some resources from outer space and derive some benefit from, from, from it, then you need to find some way to spread that benefit to the whole of humanity and to all states. Now, I guess that could be through the exploration angle. Could you say it as well? Like if we're developing technology and they're allowing, because there's lots of countries that are, say, signed the Artemis Accords, right? You know, you could join that pact and benefit from it. Could, that, you, could you make that argument? You could, you could. And that, that would be the argument that the United States government would make. Other yeah. governments might say, well, there ought to be a means of collecting royalties. Yes. And, and, and therefore, and, and sharing the benefit from that. And yeah. There's analogy from, with deep seabed mining, yeah, yeah. for example. Okay. So, so that's, uh, that's tricky. Um, uh, there's obligations of due regard. So if yeah. you're going to do mining on the moon, it's going to kick up a lot of dust, yep. um, potentially interfere with other users on the moon. That's right. Um, so how do you implement the obligation of due regard? Yeah. Um, if you're going to mine something, not just on the moon, but uh, any celestial body, and then bring it back to Earth, is there some danger of contaminating Earth yes. with something that doesn't originally come from Earth? And it's a small but very real thing. I mean, there's a NASA office that 
looks at this sort of stuff, right? Right. And would you make the same argument for us going there, digging stuff out and contaminating it as well? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Which is part of the reason why satellites are developed in clean rooms. Yeah. To, to try and minimize the risk of yeah. harmful contamination.